Good morning, America. This is Ben Goldman here, host of The Ben Goldman Show. It is July 25th, and I'm coming to you with the news. First off, we'll be talking about Elon Omar. That's right, a brand new video just came out about Elon that could very well ruin her career. Definitely proves, though, that she's a racist. Um, also, we'll be covering Jeff Epstein, who almost died yesterday. I know, one of those uh, few times where you can say someone almost died, and everyone cheers! Yay! And also, I've got my, uh, my brand new uh, two-minute takedown I'll be doing at the end of it. So let's start off with old Elon. Now, if you didn't know, aside from being a radical socialist and a generally hateful person, Elon Omar is also notoriously anti-Semitic and anti-Israel. Hates them both. Huge sponsor of what's known as the BDS movement. BDS stands for Boycott, Sa uh, Boycott Divestment and Sanctions Movement. Basically, the idea is it's a Palestinian movement to try to force other countries to quit doing business with Israel by popularly uh, pushing against them so that people won't support them. This is how they're trying to beat Israel in the UN because they know they can't beat them militarily. But this is, this is something Elon supports. Of course, nothing at all compared to the new video that just came out. Apparently, Elon Omar thinks white men are the most dangerous people in the country. I'll show you now. I would say uh, uh, our, our country should be more fearful um, of, of, of white men across our country because they are actually um, causing uh, most of the deaths within this country. We should be uh, profiling, monitoring, um, and, uh, and, and creating policies to fight the radicalization of white men. That's right. Elon thinks that we should be observing white men because they're the most dangerous people and they can hurt people. This is, this is a, a huge deflection. Obviously, this is not true. Sure, there's some white men out there that do commit crimes, but it's not a it's not a uh, it's not symptomatic of the whole of the whole culture. There's not even really a culture behind white men. Honest to God, Elon seems to think there are, and Elon seems to think it's worth calling them out, which is what we in America call racism. That's right. Elon Omar, who tried to say that white men are more dangerous than modern Islam, is a, uh, a full-blown racist. Here's the thing. Islam, Muslims, are not a race of people. It's a religion. It's a religion. Sure, there may be all kinds of qualms we can get into one way or the other with that, but it's a religion. Muslims are not a race. White men are part of a race of people, and she's discriminating against them. Not a huge surprise, considering Elon Omar is also best friends, best friends, with known anti-Semite and well-known racist Linda Sarsour. That's right, Linda Sarsour from the Nation of Islam. Now, if you're not familiar with old Linda, let me give you a quick rundown. Linda Sarsour is a close ally with Louis Farrakhan. Uh, one of the founders of the Nation of Islam, horrible anti-Semite, very outspoken about his hate for the Jews. She uh, blamed the Jews, blamed the Jewish people for attacking Farrakhan and ruining his career. Of course, his career, again, was built around hating Jews and anti-Semitism, anti so obviously not a bad thing to do. Um, Linda Sarsour led a boycott of Jewish nonprofits, including one known as The Forward, just because she didn't want to see him make money while also promoting Islamic nonprofits, because that's where she is. Um, let's see, for her security, she went and hired Nation of Islam security. Again, Nation of Islam is a notoriously, notoriously anti-Semitic organization. Um, one of the games that they allegedly play is they go around and try to uh, get Jews to hand them over their conservative Jews, to hand them over their uh, kippahs, their uh, little skull caps. And then they collect them, and so you can get the most at the end of the month. So great organization, Elon. Real smart. That's what Linda Sarsour does as well. Let's see. Let's see. Elon also believes, or sorry, Linda also believes that Jews, all Jewish people, have an issue, Jewish Americans specifically, have an issue with dual loyalty. She says that you can't be loyal to both America and Israel at the same time. Well, hey guys, newsflash for you. I'm 100% American. Don't get me wrong, I completely support the state of Israel, but I'm an American, I'm a Jewish American, I don't have dual loyalty, so her entire theory is completely wrong. Oh, 
And did we forget when uh, old Linda declared jihad on Trump and his supporters? That's right. During a conference, Linda Sarsour got up there and said that they need to declare jihad. Jihad. Not cool, Linda. I don't care if you're going to try to argue semantics with people. Jihad, in the modern day, is a bad and dangerous thing to most people, and you knew what you were doing. You knew what you were doing, and Elon knows what she's doing supporting you. Anyways, back to old Elon Omar. The honest to God truth about her is you are the friends you keep. And her friends are racists, anti-Semites, hardcore socialists, America haters. This is what she this is this is who she this is who she hangs out with. This is clearly what she believes. I don't like attacking people for no reason, but there's a heck of a reason to go after uh, to go after old uh, Elon Omar. She's dangerous. It's that simple. Um, also, before we go to Jeff Epstein, remember that you can follow me anytime on Facebook at Ben Goldman Show, on Twitter at Real Danny Gold, or you can download my podcast off of Podbean at BenGoldman.Podbean.com. All right. So next up is old Jeff Epstein, pedophile king Jeff Epstein. Gross, gross, terrible person. Honestly, Linda, I'll say, or uh, well, Linda too, honestly. Elon, I'll say this, I would much rather go hang out with you casually than Jeff Epstein, because despite all of our qualms, at least I know you're not a disgusting pedophile who sabotages people, has I two islands, two, Jeff Epstein has two islands, to have little girls have sex on. That's what he does. They just found the second one. He had just bought one like a couple, just a couple of years ago since his prison release in, uh, in the Caribbean to be able to bring other little girls to. Completely private, very hard to get to. It's gonna be very hard and hard to search it, honestly, because it's his private island. This guy is one of the richest, most powerful pedophiles and sex traffickers in the history of mankind. Thank God he finally went to prison. But here's the fun part. Last night, Jeff Epstein, they found him trying. They found him uh, trying to hang himself. Found him trying to hang himself in prison. Normally, I wouldn't say that's fun, but hey, Jeff Epstein, go ahead, hang yourself. See if anyone cares. I know I don't. I know most people don't because you're a disgusting, terrible human being, and you really shouldn't be on the earth at all right now. Um, at first, when the police found him, they thought that it was an attack against him. Then. They ruled it possibly a suicide attempt, but wait, old Jeff's not a, old Jeff Epstein apparently isn't killing himself yet. What he was trying to do was force a prison transfer by faking an attack because he doesn't want to be where he is because it's a horrible, tough, disgusting prison and that's exactly where he deserves to be because he is a horrible, disgusting human being. Horrible. Um, if you weren't aware when the arrest happened, when the Jeff Epstein arrest happened, the police found thousands, thousands of photographs of young girls, underage girls, completely naked, that Jeff had taken himself. Horrifying. Aside from all the sex toys, all the crazy stuff on his walls, those were his photos. Obviously, that's what Epstein did. Um, again, like I said, he probably has a lot more on those two secret sex islands of his disgusting, disgusting human being, and he also had a little uh, little private party jetties to fly around everywhere. Maybe you remember Bill Clinton flying on it a couple times, called the Lolita Express. The Lolita Express was one of his favorite places to bring underage girls and pass them around to foreign dignitaries. Horrible. Disgusting. Um, also, this week we found out, after Bill Clinton had claimed that he didn't meet Jeff Epstein until after his time in the White House, it turns out that Jeff Epstein had actually visited Bill Clinton at the White House several times in his first term. So, it comes to reason that Bill Clinton knew Jeff Epstein earlier. I don't know what Bill was doing with Jeff. I really don't want to know what Bill was doing with Jeff because nothing you can do with Jeff could possibly be a good thing. In 2005, Epstein was investigated uh, for the first time for raping a 14-year-old girl but he wasn't charged until 2008, and the charges against him were for 17-year-old prostitution in the state of Florida, where the age of consent is 16, so they didn't even have to register as a pedophile in most states. Got a sweet deal. 
Um, the investigation was actually kicked off by President Trump, who ended up reporting him to the FBI and giving them the evidence that they needed to try to go after him. But Epstein knew everybody and managed to get away. He was given no jail after the sentencing, no jail, and only a 13-month work release in one of his beautiful, beautiful private apartments or villas, where, after paying off police officers of the police department, he was bringing underage girls up to his room to, guess what, have sex with them again. He was bringing them to have sex with them again. Gross. Terrible person. Um... Frankly, my honest opinion, and this is just my opinion, I'm sure you guys can agree or disagree with me, the man should be in jail for at least, at least the next 2,000 years, because if there's any chance technology gets to the point where we can survive for 1,000 years or something, that guy should not be allowed to be in public ever. He's a horrible, horrible human being. Honestly, good thing that we can say this, the death penalty was reinstated earlier today, if you didn't see. Um, the federal death penalty was, so maybe it's a good time to try it out on old Jeff, get him out of the, uh, get him out of the way entirely. I say, why not? We brought it back. Almost never gets used. Probably won't get used very often, but this guy's perfect for it. Why not see if the, uh, see if all the contraptions, all the, uh, chemicals and stuff you use work? Just try them out on him. If they don't work, who cares? We can live stream it. It'll be fun for everybody because Jeff Epstein is disgusting. Before we make it over to my two-minute takedown, which I'm targeting the DNC today, I would just like to remind everybody that you can follow me on Facebook at The Ben Goldman Show, uh, at Ben Goldman Show, or Twitter at Real Danny Gold, as well as you can listen to my podcast on Podbean at bengoldman.podbean.com. All right, so time for my two-minute takedown of the DNC. All right, so let's see. To start, DNC still wants to impeach President Trump despite the Mueller interview, which is a huge disaster. The DNC went and created, created the Russia collusion in the first place. If you can't remember, they funded Fusion GPS to hire Christopher Steele to create the dirty dossier, which was denied as evidence by the FBI in their own report released by Judicial Watch this week. The DNC hired Perkins Coie, the law firm, to help scrub the report so they wouldn't be seen on it when it made it from a British ambassador to John McCain, who then turned it over to the FBI with no idea where it came from. They planted spies in the White House over and over at first to try and leak top secret stuff to the media so that Trump would look bad, despite national security concerns, despite the issue, the damage it does to our country. This is what they did. Um, they rigged their own primaries in 2016. They uh, hired off the media. Debbie Wasserman Schultz was actively rigging her primaries. They handed all of the superdelegates to Hillary Clinton, and they're doing the same thing in 2020. They're just they're they're trashing people in the media. They're using their own polls to decide who's allowed to show up at the debates, and they have no intention of letting any of the wild horse candidates, like Bernie Sanders or Mary Marianne Williamson, make it to the end. They brought socialism into the mainstream again by adopting Bernie Sanders and the uh, the four horsemen of the uh, of the of the apocalypse up in the Congress, the Squad. They spent two twenty five point two million dollars in taxpayer money to fund the Mueller report, which brought up nothing, nothing at all. And in bringing socialism and all that into the mainstream, they sparked brand new anti semitism and anti Israeli feelings by going against Israel 100%. This is what they do. The Democrats have no love for their country. They have no love for the Jewish people. DNC, you should, DNC, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Ashamed of yourselves. All right. Well, this is the end of the Ben Goldman Show for the day. Thanks for listening, everybody. Again, you can follow me easily at, um, on Facebook at Ben Goldman Show on Twitter at Real Danny Gold, and download my podcast on Podbean at bengoldman.podbean.com. Thank you guys for being here. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.